about a love like this And if I really dream it Then I wanna dream the rest of my life I got to be dreaming About a love like this And if I'm really dreaming Then I wanna dream the rest of my life My soul has been a slave I 
pray that in the hearts of every Westmanites, you will pray to hungry, thirsting after righteousness. As we magnify you tonight, be pleased again to first my great cells like in other places. Anoint me like in other places. Place inside me divine inspiration. Bless me with Holy Ghost power. As I declare the place that said the Lord, may your words be clear to everybody here. When I'm through here, I promise to give your Lord all the glory, the honor, and the praises. Isaiah 53, when you're there, please say amen. We are talking about that cross. When you're there, please say, come on, talk with me. When you're there, please say what? Amen. Bible says in Isaiah 53, 1 on down to 7, who has what? Believe or what? Report. And to whom is the what? Of the Lord what? Revealed. For he shall do what? Grow up before him as a what? Tender plant. And as a root out of a what? Dry ground. He hath no form nor what? Comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no what? You to that we should what? Desire him. He is what? Despised and what? Rejected of who? Of men. A man of what? Sorrows and acquainted with what now? And we have it were. Hid our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Surely he hath what? Borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did what? Esteem him stricken. Spitten, smitten of God. And afflicted. But he was what? Wounded. For how what? Transgressions. He was bruised for what? Our iniquities. The chastisement of our what? Peace was upon who? Him. And with his stripes we are what? We are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to what? Our own way. And the Lord have what? Laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was what? Oppressed. He was what? Afflicted. Yet he what? Open not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her what? His dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. Come on, I like when they talk with each other. And talk with me. What are we talking about tonight? That cross. Have you really ever 
really sit down. And take a good look at what the cross has done for us. Come on. Have you ever really taken a good look at what happened at the cross? Hello, anybody home? Give me some drive in this garnet. Give me some drive. Drive me tonight. Drive me. Tonight, I would like to share with you just a little bit of how much God loves us. The truth is, the human mind cannot fathom it. We say that the human mind cannot fully comprehend the love of God. We don't have the capacity to grasp it. Words are not enough, sister Vaz, to explain it. No preacher can coin it so well for folk to fully understand it. No poet can put pen on paper so well for individuals to read about it and understand it. Spencer, the singers, uh, I, I like them. They sing in Western. And in one of their songs, on one of their albums, they say that it could have been early in the morning when God called his son to his side. They're trying to paint a picture as to what in their mind they believe could have happened. And he said that when, when they, they said that when God called his son to his side, he gently put his arms around him and said, Son, the world need a sacrifice. They in the song they say that have watched as Cain slew his only brother. I watched as Samson gave his life. And they, 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 they try to coin it in such a way that folk could understand it. But what Spencer seemed not to have understood that the Bible tells us that from the very foundation of this world that heaven made a Decision, in case man should sin, heaven had a plan to save mankind. I hear people scream all the time in question, asking God, do you love me? Let me tell you this tonight, when we are through here, you will have, whether God loves you or not, are you listening to me somebody? Let me try to paint the picture for you. Where you can reach it. Jesus had no quarrel with the Father in glory. Jesus and his Father, they had no issue in glory. In heaven, Jesus lacked no adoration. He lacked no praises there. In fact, in glory, the angels, they love him without questioning. Are you listening to me, somebody? Without any question. And, and hear me tonight. God the Father did not need to convince Jesus to come on down here 
on dusty road to train every ounce of blood to save us. He needed no convincing. In fact, you've got to understand that love, they say, will always find a way. We got ourselves in deep trouble down here. We were sinking fast and still sinking fast. We got ourselves in deep trouble. We found ourselves, my friends, in the grasp, in the clutches of Satan and needed deliverance. Understand that we couldn't deliver ourselves. In fact, we couldn't do anything to appease God. In fact, God placed, put in place a system. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is what? In other words, the pay we get for sin, it is only death. Nothing more. Only death. And hear me. There's no question about it. There's no doubt about it. Every sinner, every sinner, every sinner, once you're born on here, you're born with a ticket to die. I'm so glad the Bible says also, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through who? Through whom? Jesus Christ, our Lord. Come on and say amen of there. Understand that he put in place a system. Although he says we ought to take to the temple, but then an animal slit the throat Color the blood for the remission of sin. Animals' blood, turkled, turkles' blood could not satisfy. It needed something else. In fact, when man sin, catch it tonight, when mankind sin, the devil said, Listen to me, I need blood. And not just any blood, I need the blood of Jesus. So all that you are putting in place, Ella Williams, it will not satisfy until Jesus come on my turn. Right down here on planet Earth and die if he wants to save them. The Bible tells us in Galatians 4, verses 4 and 5, that when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his who? His son, born of a woman, born under, hello somebody, to redeem them that were under the law. I'm so glad that heaven made the decision that in case Steve King should sin and have sinned, we are going to send somebody to die for them, for him. I'm so glad heaven made the decision not to send an angel. Come on somebody. Heaven made the decision not to send Gabriel. Gabriel couldn't do it. I'm so glad Jesus, the creator, decided I am coming down here and I'm going to drain every ounce of blood to save them. The Bible tells us in John 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Notice what the Bible says. That he gave. Jesus was that lent to us. He was given to us as a gift. As a gift. Was given to us as a gift. Can you imagine? Picture it. In a mind's eye, God of this universe, the creator of this universe, decided I am coming down here to die for a wretched sinner like you. They said, who am I that a king could bled and died for if Jesus the God of glory, the creator, 
decided I'm coming on here to die for you. To die for every sinner. It means, therefore, church, that every sinner on this planet, we come here with a prize. Huh? With a prize. If King Jesus, the Savior, decided, I'm coming on here to die for you. It means, therefore, you are not sheep. We are valuable. We are much more valuable than we can ever think or even imagine. I see sometimes, I see sometimes when they have some auctions, auctions and some stuff, huh? Money goes up and folks say, I'll pay X amount for that car. Talk to me now. They said that I'll pay X amount for that piece of painting because it's valuable. But no rich man, no God must to watch, no Bill Gates put them together, their money together could not purchase one sinner. It means, therefore, we are more valuable than money. We are more valuable than gold. We are more valuable than silver, diamonds, and pearl. Put them together. That is the reason why when I walk as a child of God, I walk with holy boldness. Hello, somebody. I walk fearlessly. Come on, somebody. That is the reason why, as a child of God, I don't live like any and anybody. Because I know who I am. And I know to whom I belong. Come on, somebody. I'm a child of the king. When you understand who you are and to whom you belong, understand we will live for him. We'll behave like him. We'll behave for him. So the time came when he decided, I'm going down there to die for them. Jesus, the Savior, came down here not even looking like a king. Born in a manger. Stable. Born with horses, cows, donkeys, his first roommate, those they were. Hello, somebody. He born, he was born in a humble place. A king was born in a humble place. And listen to me, he was all right there. The devil tried to block God's plan. But I'm so glad. Every step the devil made, God was one step ahead of him. The devil wanted to kill baby Jesus at two years old, but thank God they escaped into Egypt. The Bible says, one time, what time do I have now? The Bible says here, Jesus, growing up, he grew up, strength. Power, wisdom, authority. He understood who he was. Watch the movie. While growing up, he lived for his father. Worked for his father. Gathered some youngsters around him. We call them disciples. Understand that those young men, they didn't even understand the mission. But Christ worked with them. Every one of them were sinners. But I'm so glad he didn't cast any out. He accepted them as they were. When the time came, the Bible says, he sat together with them in communion service. The disciples didn't even understand what was happening here. And while he's eating with them, he's telling them, it's the last time I'm taking the supper with you on earth. What's happening, Jesus? And he's explaining to them that somebody right here, 
sitting around this table will betray me. You all know the story. They all questioned, is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? Can I tell you, Jesus? He could have pointed out the guilty one right there. But he didn't do it. He only said, one that is dipping right here with me is the one. Judah sat there knowing it was him. Christ spoke in a way that it pierced his heart, pierced his conscience. He couldn't stay there. He went out and sold his Lord out for 30 pieces of silver. Jesus gathered the boys together Thursday night. He says, come, we're going to the place. We are often pray. We are going to get some money. On their way to get some money, they noticed there was no pep in his step like before. They noticed something about his demeanor was different. They noticed he was looking sorrowful. They, they couldn't understand it. Something was on his mind. There are times you can't explain everything to everybody. There are some missions you've got to go on it all by yourself. Christ knew this mission was cut out for him. The time had come. At Gethsemane, he told them, stay here. Watch with me for a while. And then he went apart, the Bible says, and he prayed. Stay with me. There is something you must get here tonight. The Bible says he went by himself. And he prayed. The prayer was simple this. Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. Come on. Let's watch the movie. What's happening here? Let me tell you what is happening there. The world hangs in the balance. Pressure is on him like never before. Jesus is fully God here and fully human. Jesus is feeling the pain of humanity. Understand humanity, the humanity side of Christ is screaming for help. Humanity is saying, get up, walk away, throw in the towel, give up the fight, and leave. And you do not know what to do. Get down on your knees. Get down on your knees. When I'm to throw in the towel. It's time to have a. What what he saying? Father. If it be possible. In other words. Lord. I know. You sent me here father. To save them. I know. You have said it. This way. But I'm asking you. Is there another way? What is happening here church? Jesus is tearing down into Calvary. What's happening here? Jesus is hearing the scream of those he came to save, saying, crucify him. What is happening here? The same people that Jesus healed their sick and fed them, these same people, he's seen they are turning their backs from him Father, you know what he did? You know, every now and then, we need some help. Every now and then, we need some encouragement. So what he did, like tonight, like tonight, he went to his disciples. 
hoping to get some encouragement. And he found them all. Come on, talk with me. He found them all. He found them all asleep. What do you do when those who really need help from, they are sleeping? Huh? Hello? What do you do when you need some help from some folk? You call friends and they are not there. To whom do you turn? Well, I'm so glad the Savior, the Father, he understands us. I'm so glad he knows what we need. He asks an angel, get down there into Gethsemane right now. Right now. You can't allow Jesus to walk away. You've got to get him over there and encourage him. Let me tell you something. Now, I don't know why you're looking so dead and sounding so dead tonight. But any time I think about Jesus on the cross, Elder Gunter, I can't keep still because I know what he did for me. Let me tell you something here. If Jesus had gotten up from all that dirt and decided I'm not going through it, every one of us here tonight would have been in trouble. All of us here would be lost. Thank God, God sent an angel. Hello, somebody. I'm so glad God sent an angel to strengthen him. He went back to the same place the second time. And he's praying. He's praying. What is he saying? The same prayer. This is God. This is God connecting with God. You miss that man. This is God on earth connecting with God in glory. And he's saying the same prayer. In the medical term, there's a term they use they call hemohydrosis. Jesus was experiencing that. Let me tell you what that is. Hemohydrosis is when there's a confusion. There's a con there was a confusion with the sweat glands of Jesus and the blood. He didn't know whether to produce blood or sweat. The Bible says he prayed until his sweat became like droplets of blood. The only thing that could have caused that was serious pressure. Serious agony for the body to become confused like that. It was going through serious agony. Jesus could have gotten a stroke up. You all there sitting there quiet. Sitting there quiet. Don't even know what Jesus did for you. Don't even know. Danny McClurkin, he tried and he said, just for me. Just for me. Sometimes I sit and I look at Gethsemane and what happened there. Tears trickling down my eyes and I can't control it. If I was there at Gethsemane, Hella Gunter, looking at Jesus, knowing what his face, what he's faced with. And if he doesn't go through it, then I would have to go through it. I'd have said, Jesus, please stay there, even for me. If nobody else wants you, just stay there, just for me. Because God, you know, you know, if you as God, you're going through it. Experiencing such difficulty, what says you? Matthew tells us that three times he prayed the same prayer. The time had come. It's time for Calvary. I don't need to tell you what they did to him at Pilate's Judgment Hall. I don't need to tell you what went on before Herod. I don't need to tell you who denied him. I don't need to tell you what they say. You know all of that. So let's walk to Gethsemane.
You need to know what Jesus did for you. Had to eat him from Thursday night. He's weak. He's hungry. Experiencing some lashes. The Bible told us that his back was lacerated. Meaning the bones were exposed. Bones were exposed by the cruel beating from men. Now understand, when you experience one serious cut, it's so painful and using blood, your body becomes weak. Now can you imagine losing all that blood? And then you are told, there's a cross. You've got to take it upon yourself and take it there. Not only that, they planted a crown of thorn and they didn't place it. They jammed it on his head. That's Jesus. Did he need it to go through all of that? He didn't have to if he didn't want to. And he has a cross on his back and a crown of thorn on his head. Thank God the musicians are here. So he's marching to get Gethsemane. When I used to go to the church, I used to go to that I wasn't born in Adventist. We used to sing a song that says, My Jesus carried the cross. All the way to Calvary. But let me share something with you. Had it eaten from Thursday night. His body is weak. This is now Friday. And he's very hungry. He's weak. And he's walking. He just said that the Roman cross there for, 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 the, for those that were guilty of committing certain acts. It was weighed, weighing over 350 pounds. Can you imagine that? Some of that. Most of us, we don't weigh that much. Are you listening to me? And Jesus must walk with that stick all the way all by himself. I believe, Elder Gunter, that every now and then, being weak, hungry, thirsty, he must have fell beneath the cross. But did he stay down? Did he stay down? No. He got up. Danny McClurkin says that we fall down, but we get up. And Christ wants somebody here to know that every now and then, on our journey, we may fall down, but we ought not to stay down. We ought to get up. If you have a cross, take up your cross. Hello, somebody. And if you find yourself, if you find the cross, is too heavy to bear, you've got to crawl yourself. Find a way. If doubt is creeping in, you've got to push yourself. And if you can't push yourself, you've got to drag yourself. Hello, somebody. There's something that's facing you. There is something you've got to do. There's a price you've got to win. And you can't die under the cross. You've got to march all the way. So, Jesus, come on, let's encourage him. Jesus, don't give up. March all the way for me. So, there he is. I've got God got down. They nailed it together. The two pieces of wood. They stripped him of every piece of cloth he had on. I know the artist, he tried to do something nice and put some clothes on him. But it was shame on, and scandal on the cross. He was naked on the cross. Everything exposed on the cross. Hey, listen to me. The Savior died naked just for you and for me. They then treated him nicely. They pushed him down on the cross. They stretched him out horizontally and vertically making it Almost impossible to breathe and speak. They draw the spike not through the palm, but through his wrist. There's a nerve in the wrist. If that is punch up, that is why some folk, when they want to kill themselves, they cut the wrist. There's a nerve there. If that is punch up, you feel it's excruciating pain and you die slowly so they aimed for that nerve with a jagged nail and they drove the spike through there can you imagine the screams from Jesus can you imagine the pain can you imagine the agony 
He must have suffered. They stretched him horizontally. They stretched him vertically. Then they put the legs together. The artist again, he tried to paint a picture. And he placed something beneath the legs of Christ on the cross. Nothing was placed beneath the cross there. Nothing was placed beneath his legs. It was all his body was held on the cross by only three jagged nails. Stretched horizontally. Stretched vertically. Watch the movie. You remember in Mark, Jesus told them, sending a message to the devil, and if I be lifted up from the earth, move it just start now. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. You know, the devil sometimes he has what we call amnesia. Hello? It seems sometimes not to remember some things. And I'm so glad sometimes when he forgets some things. I'll tell you about some of them in this campaign. Watch the movie. When they held the cross and was just about to lift it, one of the devil counselors must have said to the devil, do everything else, but don't let them lift that cross. If, he lit that, if they lift that cross, we'll be in trouble. Can you imagine? They lit at the cross above the earth, even just an inch was enough. Lifting the cross from the earth was significant. Jesus is lifted from the cross. The devil all along thought he had the victory. While well, the devil didn't know that that lift just gave him a blow. That lift would say, I'm going to draw. I'm going to pull. I'm going to draw every sinner. I'm going to pull every sinner that wants to be saved. Hallelujah. Want to save in somebody. He chummed it in the hole. Look at him. Shame and scandal on the cross. I don't want to mess up this beautiful backdrop, but I got to show you something. You know, you know, the folk down below, they are saying all kind of stuff. Like, he said that he's a Christ. Why don't he come down from the cross, save himself? And, you know, one crook from the cross said, hey, you are the cross, Christ. Why don't you come down from the cross? And save us. You've got to know when to speak. And when to keep silent. Jesus didn't listen to him. Because there was another crook. <laughs> Woo! You ready musicians? There was another crook. And by this time. They should have changed it. To X crook. Because on the cross. I don't know what happened, but he got converted just before he died. On the cross, Jesus didn't look like anybody who could save anybody. Those three men were all in the same situation, meaning they died on the cross. Hello, somebody. One man is at the gateway to hell, but he saw that Jesus was a Messiah. He saw that Jesus was a Redeemer. He rebuked the other thief and said, listen to me, man. This man doesn't deserve to be here, but we are guilty. He looked at Jesus and he said, Jesus, oh, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. For the entire day, the entire 24 hour, is the first time Jesus is hearing some good news apart from the angel. Watch the movie. 
if Jesus, if Jesus was cherishing any thought of coming down from the cross, that statement from the crook pinned Jesus to the cross. You missed it, you missed it, you missed it. That one statement pinned Jesus to that cross. Everybody, they're against you, Lord. But if everybody, including the disciples, are against you, I want you to know I'm expecting you to go through it. I'm expecting you not to give up. I'm expecting you to go through it and save me when you get back. Jesus heard good news. Oh Lord, before he responded to that, let me back up a little bit. You remember, Jesus, we're coming musicians. Jesus said something before those men on the cross spoke. While the pain was stinging him, left, right, center, and above. And it seemed the father turned his face from what was happening. The angels must have been saying, why don't he call us? Call us rather to destroy the world and set him free. But he's not calling them. In fact, all they heard, he lied. He lied. La basta night. Now let me demonstrate something for you. So you can understand what happened right there. For Jesus to say that, let me show you what he had to do. He spin of the cross. He stretched vertically and horizontally. Breathing was almost impossible. In order for Jesus to speak, he had to do something like this. He had to raise himself up on those jacket nails. In order to speak, he had to stretch himself on those nails and say, My God! was easy you think what Jesus did for you was easy and even at that moment he could have called 10,000 angels but he didn't he didn't Jesus, even at that very point, had said, Father, I'm not going through with it. The Father would have no problem in saying, come son, come home. He would have no problem in welcoming back his son back to his bosom. But all of us would have been wrong. If that isn't love, then the ocean is dry. Let me tell you something. We need to appreciate what Jesus did for us. And stop behaving as though we don't care. We need to show some appreciation. We are to thank God for Calvary. Poor going around, doing what they want to do. 
doing what pleased them, forgetting about Jesus. And they say, God, I know you died for me, but I'll come to you when I want. Can you imagine the same pain he felt on the cross? Each time we turn away from him, that same pain must pierce him back. Mm -hmm. He told that ex stroke, I'm making a promise to you today. When I get back, you will be with me in paradise. Even for that one man, it was worth it. The Bible said, Jesus shot at the last saying, He cried aloud. Shall the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom. Jesus paid it all. He paid it all for me. That cross should have been my cross. church inside the here. Any church in Westman. I appreciate what Jesus did on the cross. Yeah. Is there such a member going to ask at this time? Is there such a member going to ask at this time? Yeah, it's this time. I'm wondering if there's any backslide in here. Any backslide. I said, Lord, I wanted to know that I appreciate what you did for me on the cross, still. It's time also. If you've never been baptized before, and you're seeing Jesus, I recognize that cross should have been my cross. But thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross of me. This is what all of us here are saying. Let us tonight recommit ourselves to the cross, to Jesus. As they sing, he left the splendor from heaven. I'm inviting every member he who can walk and want to show appreciation to God. You want to say thank you, Jesus. For that on that cross, no for me, for coming my cross for me, I'm inviting you to come down to this altar again. Was the lonely hills of Golgotha there to lay no, down to his life for oh, me? If that is the love, then the ocean is dry. There's no star in the sky, and the sparrow can fly.
God. We pause tonight to thank you for the cross. You could have given up. But Lord, you look down into waterworks in 2024, April 14, and you saw sinners in need of grace. And you stretched out your hand and clasped divinity with eternity. And you said, I must bear the cross because there is somebody that wants to be saved. Lord, help us to recognize the awesome sacrifice that you made for us. Yes, Lord. Yes. You struggled with your last breath. Lord, we thank you that while you were about to die, you stopped long enough to save somebody who needed salvation. Tonight, Jesus, corners of the earth, to hold back the winds of strife, so that somebody in water voice tonight can find Jesus. Oh, Lamb of Calvary, break some chains tonight. Shackle, so unshackle some people who are shackled tonight. Set your people free. somebody tonight Lord who is watching who is about to give up hope give that person tonight a new lease on life we thank you Lord we thank you that you made salvation possible because of your love Give somebody no rest tonight until the life is surrendered to you in love. Thank you, Lord, for your manservant. Thank you for the way you used him tonight. Thank you for the reminder of your love. Help us, O oh Lord, that as we leave this holy ground that we will keep in full focus what you did for us and if there's somebody here tonight Lord who has not yet given you a chance may that person not leave without giving you that opportunity to transform lives there's a thin line between life and death. And if you could have died to save us, then nobody needs to die without salvation. So Lord, give somebody tonight that resilience to say all the way my Savior leads me. Things we have here can't save us. Only you can save us. Come by here, Lord. Come by here. 
save us from our done for us and we give all the glory and all the honor and all the praise to no other one but the mighty name of Jesus and let all God's believing children say Amen Amen Now you understand why I sing the theme song the way I do. This is the way I express my love back to God. Now you understand why my theme song is God to the Jew. Tell me, how can God let him to come and die for a sin like us? Mercy. Back to the tree. God bless you as a go tonight. I'm encouraging all tonight. Bring one with you tomorrow. Even if you're going to Kingston, send a visitor down here tomorrow night. We're looking for 300 visitors tomorrow night. As we go, we're singing, Oh, what a love. My God has given me. It is a love. With an endless God. Waterworks District and Cave Churches, Cornell invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As International Evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April. The 3rd, and God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7:15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Seventh-day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches Cardinal invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As International Evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location, Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April of And God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7.15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
the Seventh-day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches, Cornell invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As International Evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location, Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April the 3rd. And God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7.15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Seventh-day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches Cardinal invites you to behold the Lamb Ring King of the night And made my reservation For a mansion in the sky I may not know the moment Or I may not know the day But I know that I believe in When he calls his church away When he call his church away, and I know that I believe in. When he call, I believe in, and I know that I believe in. When he call his church away. Starting this Saturday, April. And God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7:15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Seventh-day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches Cardinal invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As International Evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location, Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April the And God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7.15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Seventh-day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches Cardinal invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As International Evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location, Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April the 3rd. And God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7.15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Seventh-day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches Cardinal invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As International Evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location, Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April the 3rd. And God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7.15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Seventh-day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches Cardinal invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As International Evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location, Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April the 3rd. And God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7.15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Seventh-day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches Cardinal invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As International Evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location, Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April the 3rd. And God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7.15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Seventh-day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches Cardinal invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As International Evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location, Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April the 3rd. And God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7.15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. The Seventh-day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches Cardinal invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As International Evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location, Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April the 3rd. And God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7.15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays. 
the Seventh day Adventist Waterworks District and Cave Churches, Cornell invites you to Behold the Lamb Gospel Explosion 2024. As international evangelist Steve King proclaims the Word of God, location Deans Valley Waterworks Main Road, underneath the Big White Tent, starting this Saturday, April the 3rd. God has a way in setting people straight. Weeks. Nightly meeting starts 7:15 p.m. Rest nights, Tuesdays and Thursdays.